exactly a year ago. We started the process of bringing transactional gold and silver to the Texas legislature. We had great progress, but we fell short by hours. It felt like it was dead as an idea. But then other states took notice. I wrote a book, Pirate Money. We started getting calls. We held a summit at Liberty Hawk Ranch with at least a dozen states attending. We had our plan B in place, and Utah State Representative Ken Ivory, he showed up. He ate most of our ice cream, but he asked a ton of questions. He saw a technology demo from Glenn, and he looked through the Constitution and history. He went back to Utah and pulled together a team of experts to examine, vet, and even challenge the idea. I traveled with colleagues to Salt Lake and was impressed with how serious he is. Now we've invited Representative Ivory, once dubbed the most dangerous conservative in state legislatures, back into the economic war room, we've had him here before, to discuss the concept of gold and silver as money, as well as his recently filed HB 348. And in addition to Ken, we also invited another conservative hero, Utah State Treasurer Marlo Oaks. This is a man who has led the fight against woke, against ESG, and most recently, NAC, natural asset companies. It sounds like an alphabet soup of meaningless letters, but really, these letters are a threat to our liberty, and Treasurer Oaks is a real leader in the State Financial Officers Foundation with Derek Kreifels, and we cover him a lot in the Economic War Room. So I want to welcome uh, Ken and Marlo to the Economic War Room. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Good to be back with you always. You know, Utah is a real leader in sound money, has been for, for a long time. Can you share just a little bit of the history of Utah and sound money? Well, yeah. I mean, as you know, back in 2011, we, we led the charge with the Utah Legal Tender Act. And a dear friend of mine, uh, it was originally my bill. And then uh, I had some other things going on. Brad Galvez, uh, bless his heart, carried that to the finish line. And, and um, you know, we got that bill passed. And, and, and really, the, the, the story and the objective remains the same, Kevin. We've got a federal government that has its hand in the cookie jar, but only this time that cookie jar is our earnings, our savings, our property that is embodied in our money. And it used to be that money was a, a fixed standard, represented that, and now they're just printing the value out from under us. And, and you know, we're not going to stand for that for us and our people. And, you know, bless Marla Oaks, he's been a great champion, as you mentioned. And so we're moving forward to have transactional, functional gold and silver in Utah to protect the purchasing power of the earnings and savings of people of Utah. Yeah. Now, you've got the gold backs that have been around for a while, but you've got this new HB 348 that appears to go for further than that. What are the key components of HB 348? Yeah. So, Kevin, there are four key components. Number one is the is the functional transactional uh, ability for gold and silver that, that preserves Utahns from being devalued, debanked, and demonetized. Uh, the second part is the ability to pay taxes in gold. And, and why that's important is that that advances the argument that gold is money and not an asset subject to capital gains. Uh, the third thing that we do is we allow for our good treasurer there to invest some of our rainy day fund into precious metals, gold and silver, like all the, all the central banks of the world are doing at breakneck pace now. And then the fourth thing is we allow for the state to issue bonds denominated in gold. I mean, imagine if you could buy a 30-year municipal bond investment, one's denominated in dollars, the other one's denominated in gold, pretty easy answer which one you would choose, which could really substantially lower the cost of our debt. And so those are the four key components of the bill. Yeah, well, and Treasurer Oaks, yeah, you're probably not in a position that you can endorse legislation. You may not want to comment on all the parts and pieces of the legislation, but treasurers have a significant role in protecting the citizens of their nation. Uh, you've done this with NACs. And by the way, your piece in the Wall Street Journal was unbelievable. You woke everybody up when we didn't know it was coming. Um, can you tell us what, what are your thoughts when you see legislation like this? Well, I, I think what we're seeing is an unprecedented attack on economic freedoms, unlike we've ever seen in this country. And it, and it goes uh, everything from ESG to natural asset companies to uh, central bank digital currencies. Um, all of these things threaten our economic freedoms. The central bank digital currency, probably the most direct and uh, problematic of all of them. 
And so really this legislation, particularly the transactional piece of this, uh, is is meant, I think, to really help us to have an alternative where we can transact without having to, uh, you know, be beholden to a, a, a central bank digital currency. Yeah, well, states are very limited under the United States Constitution as to what they can make money in a state. Um, Article 1, Section 10, I think it is, but... but Every scholar I've talked to, every treasurer, we just talked to an attorney general here in Texas, they seem to believe that it's okay to make gold and silver legal tender. Is that your belief? Well, it certainly is in the Constitution. It's pretty clear that gold and silver are legal tender. And so um, that's, I, I think really that's the basis of this. It's, you know, we, we it doesn't say you can use Bitcoin in the Constitution. So um, it, it really is, uh, you know, it's been a, a long held store of value and, and it just became very difficult to transact in it as time went on. But given where technology is today, um, it, it could make a very serious comeback. Yeah, no, and I think your bill, uh, Representative Ivory, uh, takes it down that road. It says this is how we make it. You use the term functional money, which is a, a, a technical term of art in both in the accounting world and the tax world and, and really in, in the government world. Um, that's your intention, right? Yeah, you know, that's exactly right. When when Nixon took us off the gold standard, you'd have, uh, you know, a, a, a gold piece like that had real value. But in 1971, when he did that, you could buy the average home for $17,000 or 17,000 grams of gold, right? Today, we're talking about housing affordability and dumping government money after that. The average house costs $600,000. The $17,000 does not get you anywhere close to a down payment even. But Kevin, the 17,000 grams of gold would buy you almost two houses today. That's the value that's been taken right out from under us. And it's a tax that people don't even recognize, but it really is stealing the wealth right out from under Utahns and Americans. Yeah, $17,000 won't buy you a new car today, let alone a house. All right, we're, we're gonna need to take a break, but when we come back, I wanna drill into all of these benefits of gold and silver, and then I wanna compare them uh, to the not only what we have now, which is inflation, but that threat that you mentioned, Treasurer Oaks, about central bank digital currencies and what that could mean for individual Americans and our liberty. So we'll take a break and we'll be back with Representative Ken Ivory of Utah and the Treasurer of Utah, Marlo Oaks. In uncertain times, finding stability in the economy can feel challenging. But what if you could navigate economic volatility while honoring your biblical values? At Timothy Plan, they believe this balance is possible. Timothy Plan filters its volatility-weighted ETFs and family of mutual funds through a biblical pro-life and pro-family lens. So you can see competitive returns and moral responsibility, helping you to weather the economic storms. With Timothy Plan, align your investments with your values while adapting to our ever-changing culture. Since 1994, Timothy Plan has been recognized leader in biblically responsible investing. Timothy Plan, your bridge between faith, finances, and the future. Visit timothyplan.com or call 1-800-TIM-PLAN or 1-800-846-7526. Investing includes risk, including possible loss of principal. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at timothyplan.com. Here's a $10 bill. It's got the picture of Alexander Hamilton on the front of it. You know, it's kind of sad. When I was 10 years old, I, everything that I could buy for a dollar now costs about $10. That's the cost of inflation. It's just paper. It's not backed by anything. You can't exchange it for gold and silver. It used to, but you can't do that anymore. And that's unfortunate. You know, pirates wouldn't accept this. Pirates, they wanted gold and silver. Patriots, the founders of this nation, also wanted gold and silver coin. In fact, they put a provision in the Constitution, 17 words, that said states could only make gold and silver coins tender within the states. That's why I wrote this new book, Pirate Money, Discovering the Founders' Hidden Plan for Economic Justice and Defeating the Great Reset. It will explain exactly the history of money and exactly why gold and silver coins can be made modern with new technology and a useful monetary system. PirateMoneyBook.com.
As all our viewers know, we've been talking about transactional gold and silver for a while. We pushed it in the state legislature in Texas. And in fact, there is actually in Texas a proposition that will appear on the Republican primary in March, you know, which is great. We're making progress. But nobody's making more progress than Representative Ken Ivory in Utah. And now to hear and meet, uh, you know, hero uh, Treasurer Oaks and recognize that he is interested in this, that, you know, that's just a thrill for me. And Rep uh, Treasurer Oaks, would you tell us what you think is bad about central bank digital currency, CBDC? Yeah, so uh, really we're, we're seeing this um, across the globe, particularly in China, um, where it, it's essentially a currency that is programmed, that can be tracked, that is uh, able to really force behavior um, if if the government can track your purchases uh, and, and with this particular um, type of uh, monetary vehicle, uh, not only track, but turn off or uh, turn on and, and with an expiration date. I mean, it, it basically is a, a programmable voucher program um, that can control behavior. Uh, and really that's that's the number one concern is that this, this is really the holy grail of control. And so if, if somebody has exceeded a carbon footprint, for example, with their purchases, um, you know, then then perhaps they're not able to, uh, you know, buy the next cheeseburger or uh, fill up their car with gas or, or whatever it is. I mean, this this really does represent a sea change in freedom, uh, really the, the destruction of freedom on, on a massive scale. Um, it, it really is quite astonishing. Well, the thing that bothers me the most is uh, there are many scholars who believe the con Constitution gives the Congress the right to create such a monster. I mean, they can coin money, right? And so a lot of people say, well, you know, that, that's inherent in it and, you, and the government has that right. Well, if they claim that right and we have to fight them in the courts, we have very little recourse until we can get it finally stamped and killed. But Representative Ivory, you once again have come forward with an offensive strategy with transactional gold and silver in your House bill that gives the state legislature uh, the ability to create this alternative so that people don't, can opt out of central bank digital currency and opt in uh, to Utah's gold and silver. So describe that. Yeah, that's right, Kevin. I mean, it's really about options. You know, Alexander Hamilton said we may safely rely on the state legislatures to erect barriers against the encroachments of the national authority. And we're seeing those encroachments. Like Marlo mentioned, there's there's a push to even get to the point that they control what we do. And those that are backing central bank digital currencies are kind of giddy about it. We can control what they eat and where they drive and where they travel and heaven forbid if they buy guns or ammunition. And, you know, our, our money is a representation of our liberty. And in the Constitution, it was supposed to be a fixed standard. You know, imagine, Kevin, we talked about this before. I, I, I put it on the note to your book that you go to the butcher, you ask for a pound of hamburger and you get a thimble. And you go to an architect to build a house and say, I want a 3,500 square foot house and it fits in the back of your pickup because those weights and measures are not a fixed standard like the Constitution said. Our money was supposed to be the same way, a fixed standard that we could store our earnings and our savings and our property and really a representation of our liberty. And you know that's the, that's the ultimate control mechanism and we're seeing government centralizing and kudos to Marlo and you, Kevin, and, and those out there that we have to protect the liberty of our people. And, this really is kind of as Mar as Marlo said. This is the the holy grail that uh, those that want centralized control are after. Yeah. Well, you've got the book. Where's the line? How states protect the Constitution by Ken Ivory, which is a tremendous book. And states have the right and the duty to protect their citizens. But there are other issues. You know, it's not just the control issue. This is Epoch Times here uh, opinion section, January tenth through sixteenth. The day the dollar dies is the headline. We've got real threats to our U.S. dollar. We've got threats of inflation. We've got threats of other countries who want to remove the dollar as the primary reserve currency. And I think your bill also addresses how we can protect citizens in those areas as well. Yeah, you know, I think that's right, Kevin. Most people don't realize that what the BRICS are after, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa trading bloc, 
They just invited all the oil producing countries in. And as of January 1st, 2024, they're now trading oil in currencies other than the dollar. And Kevin, this year, the indebted United States has to go into the capital markets for more than $13 trillion. We overspend $2 trillion, the interest is a trillion, and $10 trillion of the $34 trillion rolls over this year. And so now we have to go hat in hand, and we can't force countries to buy the dollar anymore because they don't need it for oil. This is quite a distressing situation. And so to give people options, we want to give Utahns the option. They have a better choice to store their their earnings and savings. And, and uh, you know, this is this is the way that, that we're moving forward. We invite all other states to join us in this. It's, a, it's very critical at this time. This is not like times before. This really is mission critical right now. Well, and the legislature has the uh, constitutional authority to establish this, and that's been established also in Supreme Court case Lane County versus Oregon, where they said, oh, no, if a legislature passes gold and silver for taxes or whatever purpose, you know, nobody can override that. But the, on the executive branch side, you have to implement it. And I can't imagine a better combination of uh, than we have in Utah. I mean, here's a Bank of Kentucky note from 1837 for 12 and a half cents, uh, literally one eighth of a piece of eight. But Treasure Oaks, what's it gonna be like to implement something like this? We're, we're clearly going to have uh, to go through a process and 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 look at all sorts of different things. But, the, you know, there there is technology today that that, that really allows this to function. Um, and so it, it's really because of technology that, that this is even a, an option that, that we can consider. And so um, it will be a process. We, we are keeping, you know, this this legislation is, is written in such a way that it'll give the treasurer the, the ability to uh, go through a, a, a process that will ensure that, that we do this correctly. You know, this is because it is a, it's a big deal. Uh, we want to make sure that, that we have um, examined uh, the situation appropriately and, and are, are putting, um, you know, regulations in place, auditing in place, all of these different things to, you know, give people the, the comfort that, that this is being done right. Well, it was great meeting in your office just recently, and we got to sh demonstrate. We brought in Jason Cousins of Glint, and he showed just one option. It's not the only option, but just one option and how efficient it could be and the tools that would be available to you. I really think this is a practical thing that can be done. We're going to have to take another break. When we come back, I would like to get your opinion on what it, 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 whether or not it can be done, and if done, what it will do for your citizens. I'm Kevin Sorbo. When you spend money, you consider who you're buying from and the causes they support. If you don't, then you're likely supporting companies that are trying to destroy our country and take away our freedoms. Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They're a cell phone company and a good one. They offer nationwide coverage on the best 4G and 5G networks along with 100% U.S.-based customer support. But here's the deal. Patriot Mobile's mission has nothing to do with cell phones. They carry out their mission by giving back millions of dollars every year to Christian conservative causes that are actively engaged in the fight to save America. Voting is no longer enough to beat the woke. We have to band together, support like-minded companies, and vote with our dollars. And that's how we win. Stop supporting companies that want to destroy America and join Patriot Mobile today by visiting PatriotMobile.com or call 972-PATRIOT. Just imagine buying some gold or silver, putting it in your state, having it guarded by the state, protected by the state, guaranteed by the state, and then going out and using a debit card like this and spending gold and silver, or maybe as an employee, getting paid in gold and silver and holding your assets there, or just another way to pay, just spending a little bit of it with a debit card and putting a little in gold, a little in silver, and a little in Federal Reserve notes. This technology exists. We've shown it and demonstrated with Jason Cousins and Glint. We took it to Utah and they saw it there. Even, even the deputy treasurer looked at it and said, wow, that makes sense. So now we've got an opportunity. A state legislator who's looked at it and said, hey, look, the state ought to be able to produce this and do this. And now we have a treasurer who says, if we do it, I think we can implement it. So uh, Treasurer Oaks, can you comment on what you saw when you saw the demonstration? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's quite remarkable that, that we have the technology that, that will allow us to buy small parts, small pieces of gold, you know, to getting exposure at, at the smallest levels, because suddenly now that opens up uh, this uh, entire marketplace to a whole new set of individuals, people who haven't been able to get banking accounts, for example, or, or are afraid to, to open a bank account. Uh, so much is done on a cell phone these days, and, and really, it's just a matter of uh, downloading an app. Now, of course, it remains to be seen exactly how this is implemented in the state, but that's the, the idea is that you could uh, have something as simple as an app on your phone and, and buy gold that you could then transact with. And so there really is no um, limit on, on who could do this. Uh, and so it really brings this uh, th this whole ability to transact to everybody in the marketplace. And that, I think, is really exciting because in the past, you know, people would, would look at gold and, and you had to kind of know what you were doing. With this, you just have to know how to operate a cell phone and, and have money in a bank account. And, and you could uh, theoretically uh, gain exposure to gold and, and, and begin to build up uh, um, holdings in gold that you can then use to, to purchase things with. It's, it's quite remarkable. Yeah, well, the problem has been in the past, if, if you don't have a large income and you don't have a lot of savings, you wouldn't put it in gold or silver because it's very difficult to spend it. Uh, but this gives economic justice. And I know talking with you, Ken, about that, that is one of the things that made you most excited, that this brings uh, safety and protection and inflation hedges down to the normal person. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. You know, it's, it's this, right, to go out and buy a gold coin, to even know where to do it, how to do it, where to get it from, and then what do I do with this? I mean, if I'm going to spend it, can I cut off a piece of it and do I have to get uh, little flakes of gold to get to get my change in? And, and and it really makes it available, Kevin, for everyone, right? I mean, the average hardworking person that is seeing their paycheck just erode right out from under them and they go to buy. I mean, we've all seen it, right? You mentioned the ice cream and I'm, you know, we'll work for ice cream. I've got the sign. But but we've all seen the ice cream cart carton get smaller and smaller. It's about half the size it used to be for the same amount of money. Well, with this, you, you load $10, 10000 or $10 million into whatever the, the technology is. It buys the same amount of ice cream today, tomorrow, 10 years from now, and even 100 years from now. You know, this the same $20 gold piece would buy the men's suit in 2020, the same, you would know, buy the same thing today. It, it, it kept its value. And that's where we protect people. We allow them to protect the value of what they earn and save and, and not have it be uh, eroded right out from under them. Yeah. In fact, in 1920, you could have bought a fine man suit with that uh, uh, $20 gold piece. It would have cost you $20 today. It might cost $2,000, but that gold piece will still work in both cases. Hey, so one of the things we've tried to do with, with the book Pirate Money, and we've given out a lot of copies in Utah, uh, I'm hopeful that that will reach other state treasurers. And you, uh, Treasurer Oaks, you're, you're a, one of the leaders of the SFOF, but we're talking to, in Louisiana, we're talking in Oklahoma with Todd Russ and South Carolina, Curtis Loftus and others. Uh, do you think that other treasurers are going to buy into this? And can we build a compact of states that would work together? Well, I, I think really it's a matter of education, you know, and, and when when people realize, the treasurers like myself realize that the economic freedoms that, that are really foundational to everything that, that we hold dear here in the United States are under threat, um, that this is a viable option, that yes, absolutely, I, I think it's very much a, a, a serious uh, option that, that all of us treasurers should consider and, and consider very seriously because we are uh, under attack and and our freedoms are threatened and and we've got to look at ways um, that are unconventional uh, perhaps in the past but uh, that have very serious and very real possibilities uh, we owe it to the the citizens of our states uh, to go down this path and 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 very seriously uh, uh, look at implementing something like this 
Well, I've talked to uh, Derek Kreifels, and I'm hopeful that he, he said he was interested. You and I could host a panel maybe at an upcoming SFOF meeting. But if we could get, we've got 21 states looking actively at legislation. Utah may be the furthest along, but there are a lot of other states that want to be in the race with you. In the end, though, I think all the states that are conservative, uh, you know, God-fearing states ought, ought to come together and work together in some way to support this. And I, I love Utah as a leader. I've been, you know, I was there in 2011 when the Sound Money Act was first passed. I want to continue to work with you in Utah. So how can people help? If somebody's watching this in Utah or maybe in some other state, what's the best way for them to help? You know, the best way is to reach out to all of the legislators in Utah, le.utah.gov. You can get on the, the website, House Bill 348. You can actually follow and track the progress of the legislation. But, but, but send your note in. Let people know how important it really is to be able to protect the, uh, the purchasing power of our earnings and savings and, and to have this ability to, to, to protect our liberty this way, as Marlo mentioned. So, you know, let the legislators know this is critical, not just for Utah, but across the nation. And, you know, kudos, kudos to Marlo for the great work that he's been doing. And Kevin, for you to get the word out on this, this is really essential. This is why we're feeling the, the impact of a government run amok, indebted more than any country has ever been. And, and this is how we start really fighting back is taking control of our money and our freedom. Oh, thank you both so much for what you're doing. Hey, look, you can help. Get a copy of Pirate Money and read it. Download the Audible, read it on Kindle, however you want to do it, and then get copies and send them out to state legislators. And maybe even open a Glint or, or Kinesis or Load account. Test it out. You know, see if you can do it. Support this in Utah and in your own state. Tell your state reps and senators you want this. Follow our progress at transactionalgold.com. Click on the Active States button. Distribute copies of the book and pray. We'll summarize all of this in our free economic battle plan at economicwarroom.com. Remember, what we see as a marketplace, our enemies view as a battle space. This is Kevin Freeman from the Economic War Room.